Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bat Batista right here from the Bat Cave in downtown Chicago. It's April 25th, 2024, and I've got a trade idea for you today. But as we always do, let's take a quick look at the market and see what's going on. Even the S&P is down 68 handles. They've really had a tight range relative um, to the movement that you see here, almost a one and a third percent move on the e mini s and but we've been hanging down around 60 on the e mini s and to down around 80. We're down just around 70 mid range for the most uh, recent move. I'm talking about only today, only today, only so far this morning. NASDAQ down 274, Russell down just about 30. Russell prior to the market opening this morning was actually up. It's now down equal or as much as the NASDAQ, which we all know is down because of Meta today. I'll get to that in one second. Uh, Dow down 680. Um, surprising with the UNH uh, being one of the leaders to the upside, up almost $6. Here you see Meta, which opened uh, significantly lower, down around 415, is trading around 434 or so, down 59 and a half handles. You can see how volatility has really contracted uh, in Meta and the reason why I am not looking for a post earnings trade at this moment uh, in Meta. Let's take a look at our watch list. You'll see here I have the earnings. I like to unclick the earnings. I like to avoid earnings, but to go to them just to show you what we have today, we have a plethora of earnings coming out today. Obviously, Google being the big one, Microsoft being the big one, Intel being the big one. You've got a bunch of them probably keeping volatility a little elevated. But as you can see, and I've talked about all day today on the show, volatility up three or four percent when it was at its highs, um, not really percolating the way I would expect after meta disappointing. Maybe that's because other stocks like Apple is higher today. It's down 30 cents right now. It was up about a dollar a moment ago. Uh, Tesla was also up. It is still up $4.30. Maybe there's a little bit of a rotation into some of these beaten up stocks um, from some of these high flyers of those seven that have lifted the market. I don't see that as a very bad thing for the market. I am going to go into SPX with one of my patent pending trades here. And let me explain to you why I'm going to go there. Ivy rank of 34 has been creeping up. You can see here, obviously, it's come down some uh, from its highs, but it's at the high end of its range. This is also a directional trade here. You know, I think this 5,000 level in ES seems to be the, the place that we're gravitating towards. And with volatility not upticking as much as I would have expected on this bad news and other stocks coming out with earning, uh, you know, tonight, I'm thinking that maybe the market has a little bit of legs to it. So what am I going to do in SPX? I've done these trades before. I am always going to skew it to fit my confidence level. So if I was very, very confident in this trade, I might go shorter dated 21 days. I mean, heck, you can even go into the zero days or the one day with this type of trade. But I'm going to go out to the 56 day options. I'm going to go out to the June 21s. That's the AM settle. Those are the monthly um, uh, options here. You'll notice here um, that the volume is quite large on many of these. I'm going to change this from volume to um, percentage of being in the money just to show you that it's basically the same as Delta here. Delta is on the right hand side. Here's probability of being in the money. Let's also change that now for probability of a touch. Because, you know, it's interesting that a lot of times people will look at a trade, you know, you say sell a put if you're bullish on something around a 30 delta. You know, you can almost guarantee that the stock is going to be down to that level sometime during the duration of this trade, all things being equal. So you have to be prepared for it. You look at something that's a 70-30 probability of success on a delta and know that, you know what, there's a good chance I could get tested on this. So watch your size in all of these products. 
All right, so what am I going to do with my broken wing butterfly? And I think the even the S&Ps are down to approximately where I first put on this trade. So maybe you can get filled at the same price or a little bit better than me. You know when I go, when I do these broken wing butterflies, and I've done them before on this show when I think the market has capitulated. I've usually done them when volatility has spiked a lot more. Let's hopefully this won't bite me um, in the butt by not waiting for volatility to spike even more than this. I'm going to buy the 4700 um, uh, put. I always go around that 15-ish delta. You can see the 47 put has a 16 delta right now. I go down and sell two of the 46 50 puts. Now this is this is a $50 wide spread, one by two, but a $50 wide spread. If I was just doing uh, one strike, if I was just doing one strike, you'll notice that it's just $50, 5 hundred dollars um in risk here um on this overall trade the buying power effect because i'm paying five dollars and fifteen cents on this trade um my max profit is going to be the, the the difference of the widths which is 44 almost 45 hundred dollars obviously the probability of success is going to have to be quite low so i'm going to sell two of these buying one selling two that's fifty dollars wide i typically like to risk two to make one so that means i'm going to have to go out or go as wide as a hundred dollars wide to the 4550 and buy one of those now let's take a look at this trade trading for around two dollars and 35 two dollars and 40 cents um my buying power effect is 4755 dollars that's that risking uh two to make one because my max profit um is about five thousand dollars and change so not only is it is it twice as wide my max profit to my buying power is actually one to one so i'm doing better than risking two to make one it's almost a one to one risk reward ratio with a high probability of profit even though i'm twice as wide my break even is down at approximately 4600 that means I only have $50 worth of risk. Even though I'm twice as wide on my put spread, 46.50 to 45.50 versus the 47 to 46.50, my break even brings us all the way down to 46. That's why I have a 91% probability of success of making one penny on this trade, not the 235 or $240 that you would sell it for, but to make one penny, I have a 91% probability of success with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. To me, that's intelligent trading. If you're omnidirectional or slightly bullish, this has one long delta, 1.3, and SPY, that would be 13 long deltas, and you get paid around $4.26 um, in data, de data decay per day. This is gonna be slower moving with 56 days to go than if it was um, a shorter dated. That's how I kind of reduce some of the risk. Even if I were to do this trade in a shorter dated, have the same risk one to make one type of probability with a, with a similar 91% probability of success, it would move a lot faster if I went into the 22 day options or the zero day options, obviously, or the one day options. Now I skewed this a little bit more using a little bit more buying power on this trade. I got $4.25 cents for this trade you can see right there it's mid price 425 430 i did this trade right when the e SPs were down around 70 or 71 uh handles i am using a little bit more um buying power on this trade obviously a thousand dollars more buying power because i moved it by ten dollars here even though these strikes are ten dollars they represent ten times the size of spy so i actually moved it by a thousand dollars i brought brought my break even closer to at the money ever so slightly uh down at around you know 46 20 25 or so because of the four dollars and change that i'm getting in credit i moved my pop from 90 to 91 but i got that extra dollar so for an extra thousand dollars in buying power i got an extra thousand dollars in credit i did increase my delta to two 2.2 from 1.3 so i got an extra long delta fits my bias um and didn't really reduce my pop or my probability of profit by that much increased my theta obviously everything 
works linear in here. Let's see where 4620 over the next 56 days brings us in SPX. That brings us all the way down to, well, it brings us down to basically where the market started this year. So if you think that the market could sell off um, what it's done over the last you know four months or so in one month, which is certainly possible, because when you take a look at the probability of touch here, you're looking at a 30% probability of touch to your max profit which is $4,400 in change. You're looking at almost a 25, 27% probability of touching your break even and a max loss is somewhere around 22% of a touch. Staying there at expiration, only around 9%, 12%, that's what Delta is, and only really about a 14% chance that we close at your max profit. So what am I looking to make on this trade? Well, heck, if we have a rally tomorrow, I'll probably take my quick dollar on this. Although this is a 56-day trade, I might want to stay in this a little bit longer, especially if we get a move higher pretty quickly with earnings coming out tonight. If those earnings are good, I would imagine SPX is going to rally. I would look to keep this trade on a little bit longer, maybe make 50% of the profit of the credit I received. That would be around $2 on this overall trade. If you want to see these trades at any time before you watch this podcast, you can always go to the follow page, click on Bob the Trader. You'll see me up there. You'll notice my role from Google taking advantage of the down move, trying to keep the dream alive here on a trade that I've been nursing for quite some time. I think I took that Google trade that had around $4 worth of risk down to around $1.50 of risk. It's still a losing trade, but I just bought myself another 35 days in time to be right. But here's the SPX trade. It's my patent pending SPX broken wing butterfly. All right, now you know what I need you to do. I need you to open, move, transfer, bring your account to Tasty Trade, the number one brokerage firm in the galaxy. Help us keep the lights on here. And you know what else? It lets us keep all this live free content for you so we can give you trade ideas and not even that, just food for thought and maybe a logical way at looking at the market and how you can maximize your dollars for your risk.